Good Monday morning. I am MPJ and you are watching Fun Fun Function. A viewer Corey sent in this question. What are your thoughts on various diagramming systems, e.g. UML and ADL for code documentation, and how often do you use them? For the ones of you that don't know what this is, UML and ADL, I had to look up what ADL was by the way, uh, they are visual languages, uh, like they are basically sp very specific ways of drawing boxes with arrows between them to describe different parts of software architecture, how classes relate to one another, how um, how databases uh, how how databases look basically and and stuff like that since these languages are pretty specific there's also ways of actually generating actual code from these diagrams and uh, and also the inverse generate these diagrams from code i've used uml a little when i started out as a developer and the more i tried to use it the more I found that it was a very elaborate waste of time. And I'm far from the best developer in the world, but uh, I have worked with some of the best developers in the world, and none of them uh, are even close to using UML when communicating around code. What you use when you communicate around code and want to describe high-level concepts, con <laughs> concepts is using a whiteboard. You use a whiteboard and you, and you draw arrows between and you talk with your colleagues around that. That is how you describe software. And of course that's not very specific, uh, but that's kind of the point. When you're making a map of a city, you don't want to draw every single, uh, every single thing that is on the street. You want to draw only the things that are relevant. Specific specificity is not the goal when you are describing high-level concepts. You're making a map for the person, so to speak. If you actually need specificity, that is what we have computer code for, actual code. Code is what we use to describe very, very specific relationships, like exactly how things are supposed to work. That's what, what code is for. And I really think that this is lost on a lot of people, that code like computer code, like JavaScript and C Sharp or Java or C++. This code is, this is for humans to read and write. The computer does not actually understand JavaScript or C++. That is compiled down to machine code, which is just some, for us, unintelligible garble that a computer actually can understand. So programming languages, they're for us. They are languages for us to communicate with each other so that I write some code and you can reasonably read that code and then uh, that is compiled down to something the computer can understand. But the, the code is for our collaboration as developers. Or if you're not in a team, it's just there for so that you can understand what your former self was doing. And this is why things like specifications, software specifications in in documents in, written in English don't work. If you're not familiar with writing specifications for software and you're doing it for the first time, you will believe that you can uh, define at least largely the software or the software details and translating that specification to code will be uh, relatively easy. This is of course incredibly untrue, as anyone that has tried to do this knows. English is a language that is not terribly expressive. It's, uh, it's not good at describing things exactly. It's very good at describing things roughly. For example, if I look out the window here, uh, I will see that there is, uh, there is a bus stop, a lamp pole, and a... Uh, a, uh, some kind of flower bush and a road. That gives you an idea of how, how what things look outside of my window, but if you were asked to, to draw that exactly from my description, uh, you would probably be pretty far off. My brother, who is an artist, uh, he's, a, he's a very technically apt, but he's not a programmer, and a lot of people that come into programming for the first time and they see code, they believe that this is, oh, this stuff, this is for the computer. This could be made a lot easier. We should, 
we should be able to do make a visual programming language where we can draw we can just draw our program instead and so that we don't have to type it out it seems that seems very archaic programming that should work like any other software it should be visual and easy to do and then you run into the very same trap here like you believe that boxes and arrows and, and visual constructs like that are effective at describing uh, complex relationships and they really are not they are very good at describing them roughly like if you if I say okay roughly here here's the model and here's the controller and here's the view and you draw arrows between them then uh, that that is good at describing the rough idea but uh, if you actually try to implement this and actually map this this construct exactly towards what the the logic actually actually looks like things are going to start breaking down and you're going to start seeing how uh, how how rough this this tool is and it's fine that they are rough that is then that's super useful uh, it, it is very useful to draw things for people and it's very useful for me to to say rough things about the environment outside of the uh, outside of the window that is useful for you when making sense of reality but we must not fall into this trap of believing that uh, just because English and drawings are good at describing uh, concepts in reality in a rough way we can also use them to describe concepts concepts in a specific way that does not work very well to describe things like physics for instance we are going to need a language that is very well adapted at describing physics like math and in order to specifically describe a software system we are going to need a language designed to do just that which is a programming language and this is the essence of why specifications don't work they don't work because if the specification was so good that it described the whole software system the specification would be code if we want to describe a software system exactly then we use code that is what code is it's a perfect description of a software system writing specifications and plans and uh, describing architecture in software using languages that are not programming languages it's kind of like squeezing a soap you you have to squeeze just right and if you try to squeeze too hard the soap just goes bloop and this is my problem with UML it tries to squeeze the soap too hard these tools they try to give an overview of software at the same time as giving a lot of detail and that just creates a tool that is good at neither and you can become even more philosophical with this you can talk about mental models in in general for instance like uh, a bus is passing outside my window right now and when I say bus that word is a mental construct for me uh, we have this roughly the same abstraction you have you have an abstraction in your head about how a bus, bus looks like and I have an abstraction in my head about how a bus looks like however both our models are very far from what a bus looks like in reality on a detail level and that is the way it should be in order for the abstraction to work it has to get rid of a lot of detail and be very decoupled from the actual uh, actual object that's what an abstraction what a model is a map of your city is meant to lie a little bit another parallel I would like to make is uh, to the language cucumber Cucumber is a language that looks very much like English that you use to write specifications for software and those specifications are executable. So you can write things like given that I navigate to the home page and I click the uh, cart icon then I should find myself on the cart page and then you specify a step like uh, for that given that I navigate to the home page you write the actual code that will uh, remote control the browser to go to that home page and then you like repeat that until you have all the uh, the uh, the steps specified and the whole idea with this is to 
give uh, this is part of uh, the behavior driven development movement by the way uh, that you that this can be used as a language that you and the customer can use it gives you and the customer a common language which is a great idea I, I really like the idea appeals to me a lot but I have never quite gotten it, been able to pull it off in reality because um, Cucumber as a language it has two responsibilities uh, on the one hand it's supposed to give the customer an overview of how the system looks and how the system behaves and on what the other hand it's supposed to have be a a way of creating these uh, test specifications that the uh, test system can parse and execute and verify that they work. And in trying to do these two things at the same time, it kind of uh, makes it mediocre at both. Because in order to do this thing uh, be executable, it needs to be pretty specific. And in order to be pretty specific, it needs to sacrifice this overview because it may it becomes hard for the customer to uh, to understand the system from the specifications because they tend to be the, there's a lot of noise from the detail that you need to add in order to have this thing work and it works the other way too because in order to uh, make this thing work make the overview uh, uh, make it feasible for the customer to have an overview you need to sacrifice a lot of detail. You can't show all of the execution stuff in, in the Cucumber specs. So uh, it becomes kind of it becomes kind of problematic for, uh, for this thing too, because it's not quite as specific as you would like it to be. So if you're creating a communication tool, uh, and remember code is a, com uh, is a communication tool, then you can either have one that is good at describing things on a very high level with low detail or you can have a tool that is very good at um, describing things at, at high detail but very bad at uh, giving an overview and a high level uh, perspective and if you try to create a tool that it's in the middle it's gonna be bad at both those are my thoughts on uml you have just watched an episode of Fun Fun Function. I release these every Monday morning at 800 GMT. But if you don't want to wait that long, you should check out this episode that the machine learning gnomes at Google have selected for you. I am MPJ. Until next Monday morning, stay curious.